Okay, hi there, hope you're well. Here is the first of two short videos looking at a whole series of commonly confused terms. These are key terms that uh, are clearly related, but there are important differences and oftentimes students uh, confuse them in their exams. So we'll do micro first, and then we'll have a second video looking at macro. Here we go, this is basically key definitions, but hopefully explaining as we go through. First commonly confused pair is ad valorem and specific taxes. Look to see if you get a question on intervention, which tax is being introduced. An ad valorem tax is based on the percentage of the sales price of a good or service. For example, VAT at 20%. And an ad valorem tax, if it goes up, causes a pivotal inward shift in the supply curve. Percentage tax. Whereas a specific tax, another form of intervention, is a set tax per unit. Again, imposed by the government. A couple of examples, the duty on fuel, for example, will be a certain amount per litre. And there's a new plastic packaging tax being introduced in, into the UK in 2022, which is 200 pounds per tonne of packaging by weight. Another pair of commonly confused terms are luxury and normal goods. Now, normal goods is any good or service with a positive income elasticity of demand. In other words, demand goes up as your real income rises. And normal necessities have an income elasticity of demand which is greater than zero, but uh, less than plus one. So, for example, plus 0.8 or something, that would be a normal necessity. Whereas a luxury good is a category of product where the income elasticity of demand is greater than plus one. The coefficient is more than plus one. Demand rises more than proportionate to a change in real incomes. External cost and social cost. Again, this is extremely common. People often confuse the two terms. They're not the same. So external costs are those costs faced by a third party for which no appropriate compensation is paid. So obviously examples have been things like pollution from production and from consumption. Uh, external costs are the, the negative externalities, of that, the extra costs for third parties, and they occur outside the market transaction. Social cost is the cost of production or consumption of a product for society as a whole, for the community. Think, think of it like the social supply curve. And social cost equals private cost plus external cost. What about external benefit and social benefit? Well, similar here. Again, they are confused. External benefit is a benefit to a third party agent arising from production and or consumption. Positive externalities lead to external benefits, which benefit other people. A social benefit uh, includes the private benefit plus the external benefit. So a lot of people confuse social with external. No, social includes the external cost or benefit plus the private cost or benefit. Marginal cost and variable cost. Well, they're linked because marginal cost depends on what happens to variable cost. But marginal cost is the change in total cost from a business increasing supply by one extra unit. The cost of the next tonne of cement or the cost of the next car produced, the cost of the next home built or the cost of the next kilo of wheat a farmer might grow. The next unit. Variable costs are those costs that do vary directly with the level of production. Because in the short term, you're probably going to need more variable costs, more, more inputs, components, energy, packaging, variable labour inputs to increase output. So variable cost is any cost that rises with output, but marginal cost is the cost of the next unit produced. Sunk cost and fixed cost. Yes, this is a good one. So sunk costs cannot be recovered in whole or in part if a business decides to leave, uh, uh, make a decision to leave a market or an industry. So sunk costs are things like the loss of goodwill, the, the, the costs associated with having to pay off contracts, so on and so forth, the cost of having to make a fire sale of assets if you leave the industry. And the existence of high sunk costs makes a market less contestable. Fixed costs, well, not every fixed cost is a sunk cost. So fixed costs are business expenses that do not vary directly with the level of output in the short run. Whereas sunk costs are those costs dependent, happen if a firm leaves the market. 
the price mechanism and the free market. Again, important terms these, commonly confused. So the price mechanism describes how changing market prices leads to a series of effects, signaling effects, rationing effects, incentive effects, uh, affecting producers and consumers, which in turn allocates scarce resources among competing uses. That's the price mechanism. The free market uh, is when the price mechanism is given unfettered ability to work its, uh, work its way through. So the system of buying and selling that is not under the control of or intervention by the government. So there's no taxes, subsidies, maximum minimum prices, buffer stock schemes and so on and so forth. Also known as a laissez-faire economic system. Here's another commonly confused pair. Deregulation and privatisation. So deregulation uh, involves the opening up of markets to more competition uh, by reducing one or more barriers to entry. And the aim is to increase the market supply to bring the price down for consumers through competition, stimulating competition and innovation. So you might liberalise the market by, by reducing the legal barriers to entry or by bringing down import controls, so on and so forth. That's deregulation. Whereas privatisation is a slightly more narrow concept. It's the sale of a state-owned business to the private sector, normally through a stock market listing. And privatisation is the opposite of nationalisation. Predatory pricing and limit pricing is another pair of commonly confused terms. So predatory pricing is when a business prices its goods and services at such a low level that they actually probably make a loss and it's done with the de deliberate aim of forcing existing firms to leave the market and thereby over time increase the market power and market concentration of the existing firms. So predatory pricing, pricing at a loss, deliberately to inflict commercial damage on a rival and perhaps force them out of the market. Well, that is often seen in most countries as illegal and contrary to competition policy. Limit pricing is, a, again, another strategy where firms are willing to depart from profit maximisation. They will cut their prices to a level they think are low enough to, to make the entry of new firms perhaps much harder, commercially unviable. So it's basically cutting prices, sacrificing profits to make it unprofitable for new players, new challenges to enter the market. Cooperation and collusion. Again, similar sounding terms, but different. So cooperation is any form of agreement between firms to cooperate on issues of commercial and social interest. That might involve, for example, businesses in an industry agreeing a joint industry standard on something. Uh, things like car safety belts and safety systems, what have you. Or it could be joint ventures between two businesses that perhaps find they've got a project of mutual interest that serves their own commercial objectives. Whereas collusion is anti-competitive behaviour, be it tacit or explicit. It's where two or more parties act together to control supply, perhaps fix prices, share the market and thus prevent fair competition. And collusion is common, as we know, in an oligopoly and duopoly. And game theory can be used to explain that. So there we go, a whole series of commonly confused micro terms. And in the second video, we'll look at some commonly confused macro terms ahead of your exams. And I hope you found this useful.